Hey everybody, welcome back to The Basement. Welcome back to Chris's Trains and Things. Today we're checking out a brand new set that just came in from Lionel, and I've got it right behind me. But let's check out the box and open this thing up first, and then we'll come back and look at this beautiful set. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Chris's Strange and Things. Today, we are gonna be checking out one of the new sets that just arrived at dealers. It is the Cumberland Valley Way Freight set. And this features one of the L1 Mikados. And the Mikados came in a couple months ago now, but whenever we get a full set to go along with an engine, typically it takes a little bit longer, but they're finally here. This is a really cool set. Now I've got the box here. This is not mine, this is my buddy John's from the Lower Susquehanna Valley Model Railroad Club. Again, John dropped this off for us to check out together on the channel. And I want to show you the box because the, the box art is really neat on this set, but there's a lot of waste. And I think it's important that we highlight that. So let's go ahead and open this box up together. So it's a huge shipping box. We open this up. The box art is really, really neat. So that's certainly cool that we, we're not just getting an orange box which is kind of what sets used to come in more and now they're kind of coming back with doing more of these these box art sets which is really cool so we're going to get this out of the box and look inside and see because this is an engine one two three four cars that's it and look how big this box is so let's see why it's taking up so much space all right so here we go here's the box you can see we have the l1 mikado 520 this is the one at the railroad museum of pennsylvania so highly collectible it's got the Franklin Adams Apple box car, which is really nice, a flat car with Charlie, a Navy Freight Sounds box car, and an N6B cabin car. But let's go ahead and open this up because there's a lot of wasted space in this box, guys. I don't know what they were thinking. We could have had a whole other almost engine box here, but I mean, it's nice and organized and clean, but why is there so much foam? We all know that having a train collection makes it really difficult to have storage space we've got a lot of things going on here so the trolley is in a separate box so that's how we see six boxes total but my goodness we could have fit that in here and cut the box we would have cut all that out of this box so let's go ahead we're gonna get this out get this on the layout and check this set out together but so after talking with some people, it turns out that the boxes are actually a predetermined size because they already have the geometry figured out for how many they can fit on the shipping container to bring them over from the manufacturer. So a little interesting tidbit on why the boxes are the sizes they are. They probably couldn't get this into the next smallest size, so they go with this size because that's where they have it figured out of how many they can actually get on the ship. So a huge box, beautiful art on that box, but lots of wasted space. And what do we get inside that? Well, we get this fantastic... L1 Mikado from Lionel. This is old MTH tooling that Lionel purchased and then Lionelized. So they put whistle steam in it. They put legacy Bluetooth. Uh, they took away the drop plate that it had. They made the green a little bit too green and not as dark Brunswick. But you know what? It's still a fantastic model. And this is not the first L1 Mikado to have, I have on my layout. I have another one that I had purchased. It was a, the single units. And the single units came out, I want to say it was August that they arrived and then usually the sets always take a little bit longer because there's other additions to the set that maybe aren't done in production yet. But this is engine 520 and it's the one that's up at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg. So not too far from me. So it's pretty cool. So I actually didn't really want to add this to my collection, but I didn't want to buy the whole set. My buddy John from the Lower Susquehanna Valley Railroad Club, he purchased the whole set, big PRR guy, and he dropped it off so we could run it here on the layout and I could show all of you on the channel. So John, thanks again, buddy. Really appreciate it. And viewers, if you're appreciative of the things that John lets us run here on the channel, give him a shout out in the comment section. We'll put his handle here as well. He has a YouTube channel he posts some shorts on. Be sure to give John a follow so you can see all these great engines running on the club layout almost every weekend. So this is the Cumberland Valley Way Freight set. And what it comes, what comes in the set is what you see behind me and what you're going to see running. We have the L1 Mikado number 520, has the doghouse tender, which is really, really cool. We get the really cool Adams Apples boxcar. And a lot of people, I, I know a few people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, I know a few people that purchased this set just for 
that one box car. It is super cool, super unique. And if you're from Pennsylvania, and especially from Adams County, where there's lots of apple orchards, that's a really cool car to have in your collection. There's also a US Navy box car that's kind of all gray with white lettering. And that's actually a freight sounds box car. So we do get some freight sounds coming in the, the, the tail end of this train as well. Then we have a Pennsylvania flat car with a bump and go trolley. And the bump and go trolley that we get is a Chambersburg trolley, which is a Chambersburg is a large town out in the Cumberland Valley, just outside of Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, where I spent some time in college. And Chambersburg's a cool little town. And so it's really neat that they did a that they did a trolley for Chambersburg, which is really neat. And then we have the caboose at the end. Now these cabooses came in a little while ago, and this is the N6B wood-sided caboose. And obviously this is a Pennsylvania scheme on this one. We do have the lanterns in the back. We've got the wood detailing as well, some add-on detailing parts. We've got a, a figure up in the cupola up top with the curved roof. I have this in Strasburg. There's a couple other PR ones that have been delivered, but this one is really, really nice. So really cool to have that guy here with this set as well. All right, so an MSRP price of $14.99.99 gets you a train that's about 67 inches in length. It can run on 042 curves, so it can run on the small, really small layouts, not maybe the smallest or tightest curves, but 042 is pretty tight. So hopefully that allows a lot more people to be able to access a set like this. And obviously the only thing in the sets that's restricted to space is the Mikado itself. All those other cars can run on 027 if you really needed them to. But the Mikado is limited to that. <laughs> my Mikado up we did have some gearing problems I had purchased mine and when we got it out of the box the it ran perfectly fine in forward when I went to put it in reverse when it was hauling some die cast coal hoppers it was locking up we were having some gearing issues fortunately I didn't get much of that on video before I sent it back but I did mention at the end of my review for the initial Mikado from a few months ago now I was replaced really quickly from Berkshire Station and my new one works fine however it turns out that I was not alone in having those issues. Some of the other Mikados have been plagued by gearbox issues, which is devastating to hear. There were gearbox issues with the K4s years ago, and hoping that you know the MTH gearbox would have held up, and apparently they must have changed something, that there's some issues. Now, this one, fortunately, doesn't have any issues. It's been running really fine. It ran fine for John. It's been running fine for me. So we're going to be able to see it run around the layout. This does feature whistle steam on it as well. So we'll be able to see that as it goes around the layout. I'm not going to talk too much about the, the history of the L1. You can go check out my other review on that if you'd like to see that. But we're going to be running this one around the layout. And in fact, we'll send it around with the N6B cabin car a couple times, but then we're going to take that off and swap it out for the N8 caboose, which is the crew talk caboose that Lionel released in the 2023 Volume 1 catalogs. In fact, the Vision caboose was part of the Super Set, and this is the PRR version. Now, I will tell you, it doesn't come in a black box, uh, but we're going to go ahead and we'll cut to a quick just view over of that set, or excuse me, of that car, and then we'll eventually, as we see this going around the layout, we're going to swap out those cabooses so you get dual freight sounds. We have the box car that gives freight sounds, and then we'll have the the, uh, the N8, N8 caboose that'll also give us some freight sounds as well as that air whistle, which is super cool. So let's go ahead and check out that caboose and then we're gonna send this thing around the lab. Everybody, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments on this really neat set, another great set under that PRR flag. So thanks again for watching. Let's go ahead and check out the caboose and we'll check this thing running around the layout. This is one of the new crew talk cabooses and this is an N8 cabin car. We've got the train phone antenna on the roof line, which is really neat. And this has all sorts of cool sounds in it, freight sounds and some dialogue as well. Now, these first were cataloged, oh, there it goes, with the Vision Line uh, Super Set. They had the Vision Caboose, and that is just really a Vision Caboose, not a Vision Line Caboose, which is how a lot of people perceived these things to be. Now, they also cataloged this caboose as well, the uh, and another Pennsylvania N8 cabin car in the same fashion. They're not called vision cabooses because it's not a vision caboose. It is just a Freight Sounds Crew Talk caboose. And so I've got it programmed into my legacy remote here as the Pennsylvania N8. I've got the IR track sensor 
This has an IR track sensor inside, so you can run it with your sensor track. But when we go to that, we've got a air whistle, which is pretty cool. And then we've got all the other controls that we would normally have with like a station sounds diner. So we've got some crew talk. All our papers are in order. Your boss says we're good down on the east end. Let's get rolling while I call for signals. Air test is good. We got our orders in hand. Clear out. It's just a fun little dialogue there. It's gonna keep we're going. On the we gotta get moving if we're gonna make schedule. You also have sounds as it moves. We've got... We got some smoke about eight cars up from us in the caboose. Need to make an emergency stop here to check this out. How do the bills look? A mess. I hope whoever blocked this train did a better job sorting than that blasted yard clerk. Pretty fun. Let's get closer. So as we look at this, we've got lots of separately applied details here on the end. Well, not a lot, but we've got handrails here. We've got the train phone antenna. There is a crew figure up here in the cupola. There is no detailing here as we've got the sounds and the speaker and, and whatnot. So there's, I would probably want to glaze maybe those windows because it doesn't look all that nice inside just because of the small size that this is and it has to fit all those freight sounds in it. We do have lanterns on the back. If you turn this over, you'll see those illuminated lanterns there on the back of the caboose. And we do have an electrocoupler here on the front of the caboose. So you could detach this caboose from the rest of your train where the back is just a regular O-gauge coupler. Because typically we're not gonna be coupling from the back of the caboose where the lanterns are, you'd be coupled up here. So I thought that was a neat touch that they put the electric coupler up here. I would swap this rear coupler for a Katy coupler so it looks a little more sterile as that train goes by. Lights off, turn the lights back on.
that last cut. 